What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Skid Cities. This is a dystopian cyberpunk city builder where it's basically SimCity, but cyberpunk. It's important to note that the point of this game is not actually to build like a functioning society. The point of this game is to build the biggest, largest, gnarliest dystopia that you possibly can. Like, you are actively building a surveillance state. So the more gnarly stuff you do, and the more you favor corporations, and the more you, like, sell out, effectively the more successful you'll be in this game. So uh, in most city games, it's like, oh, you've got to have food for people. Oh, you've got to have electricity. In this game, it's more like, hey, all these people in the slums want to modify and have a robot arm. Uh, you need to subsidize development of robot arms, otherwise they're going to be super upset with you. And frankly, I totally understand that misgiving about society. I've been waiting my entire life for a super awesome Adam Jensen robot arm. I would take one in a heartbeat. My old arm is flesh and inefficient. My robot arm would be perfect and infallible. Chrome does not bend as easily as flesh. So anyways... Welcome on in. We're going to take a look at the game for about 30 minutes, see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list. It's important to note this game is in very early access right now. So there's going to be bugs, there's going to be bumps, and I'll do my best to point those out along the way. Uh, near the end, I'll give you like my finalized thoughts about it, having played it over the weekend. But let's dive straight on in and start building our dystopia, shall we? We'll go career mode over here, and uh, if after watching this you wanted to get it, I'll have a link for you down below. So next to my socials. You should definitely swing on through. My Twitch stream especially is crazy rad. Uh, but anyways, I will, you know, have a link for the game down below just in case you wanted to dive into this early access experiment with me. We gotta pick where we wanna start. We can be from Greenland, which means that, like, we have bad we have bad residential and we've got, like, bad factory, but our corporate taxes and wealthy taxes are better. Apparently, the Yakuza and Theta Corp are going to be invading over there. On this side, we have the Canadian Trade Authority, uh, so they have, like, apparently a bonus to organized crime. Their residential is not quite as good. Uh, their unrest is way higher. And then it looks like their wealthy taxes are, are higher as well. And they're at risk of the Yakuza, Bonfire, which is a terrorist organization, and then Theta Corp. Uh, we have the Federal Trade Authority, which is what's left of America, or uh, United States. It looks like they've got a bonus to factories and residentials, and they have the same problems as the previous. We've got the Island of California, which is apparently floated off into the sea. I guess that we're a nautical people now. Uh, we've got higher corporate taxes, higher wealthy taxes. They get a bonus to corporate offices, and their rich residential is nicer than other people's. However, their poor people definitely get it with both barrels, and their factories also have kind of like a problem. They also have a problem with dissidents, I guess. Uh, we can also be in the lowlands of Great Florida. It looks like they've got the same criminal problems everybody else has. Looks like they've got residential taxes are poorer, unrest is higher, organized crime is higher, street crime is higher. And then it's in green, though, so I don't know if that's, like, a good or a bad thing. Maybe it's they get a bonus against that. It, it seems like they get a bonus against that to me is the idea that they're trying to get across here. But honestly, I couldn't frankly tell you. It's written in green, okay? Everybody knows that things that are written in green are a good thing in video games. Uh, it looks like we can also, like, go to other places, too, if you really want to. I don't know if these are fully implemented yet. Yeah, it says coming soon. So it looks like there's actually going to be, like, a lot of stuff we can play around with. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll just go with, like, I don't know, the island of California sounds like fun. It looks like they suck at residential, but, like, oh, well. Uh, the name of our city, uh, I'm going to name it, I'm going to name it Ballertown EX5000 Sephiroth. X, X, X. There we go. That's a good That's a good name for a city, right? Nobody's ever going to have a tangible problem with that city name. I guess we could have probably squeezed an oo-woo in there as well. But, ah, well. Missed opportunities. Such is life. The great thoughts always come up way after you've actually implemented things. Hey, so here we are. We've landed inside the confines of the game. God only knows where I'm at right now, but we are in the middle of the wilderness, and it's time to build a city. We built this city. We built this city on rock and roll. There we go. So we've got our road over here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to need to do is make, like, a road network. So let's just drag out a road in true SimCity fashion. Boop. There you go. The road hath been dragged. Uh, what do cities need? Well, cities need peepos. 
And so, like, I would suggest that we make some kind of peepo area. Uh, so we'll make, like, a poor residential area. That seems like a good place to start for any burgeoning, growing dystopia. Uh, this will auto-build roads, by the way, to stop you from stacking. So you see those lines effectively in the middle of, like, the grids of squares? Those are roads that it's auto-building, just in case you were wondering how that works. Uh, I'm going to put that in right there, and then I'm going to put that in right there. And then we'll kind of, like, make a space over here. Oh, look, people are already moving into our dystopian shantytown. Hooray! I knew I could. You see, you just got on the internet nowadays, you say the word shanty, and people get confused, and they think you're talking about sea shanties. And so they're just like, yeah, dude, I'll sign up right now. It's not sea shanties. It's um, basically cardboard shanties that we all live in right now. So there you go. Uh, we built our first little residential area. Huzzah. And people are moving in, and they live inside of these little crap shacks. Awesome. So these people are going to need jobs. Uh, that's going to be the next thing we need to provide. Uh, poor people, they work in factories. That's pretty much all of the nuance that there is to the game at this point. Poor people apparently love to work in factories. So let's put in, like... You know, a little bit of that factory action right here so that they've got a place to work at. We'll go ahead and slam some roads on in here because you're going to see it's going to be upset with us. It does not like that. Uh, it's going to need water and it's going to need roads so that all of this can be accessible. And how do we get those things? Well, we're going to have to go beneath the surface. And that's kind of why I rounded this out over on this side. Uh, what I would suggest that we do is that we think about building ourselves a lower level. So this game has building on three separate levels. You've got the underground, so you can make like an underground hive city if you want, where all the poor people live and they go, ah, the light, it burns us. And you know, they inject glowing green fluids into their arms until they get turtle and rat powers and crocodile powers. Uh, you can build them on this ground right here so that they actually get to see the sunlight, which is awfully nice of you, but doesn't really fit in with our dystopia. And then there's also kind of the cloud district where you can build way up on like an upper level too for all the people that are better than everybody else. Uh, we'll go ahead and we're going to do a downwards road right here. So at the end of this street, there's going to be a downwards road that takes us down to the under level. And we'll go ahead and drop that on in right here. Uh, there's a bit of lag when we transition, but don't worry about it. Everything's going to work out okay. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, what we're going to need right now is I need to be able to see buildings that are above this. So there we go. Uh, we can now see buildings that are above this. I don't know if this flicker is intended, like you're looking at like a modified AR display or something like that, or if it's like a thing that just exists. I don't really know. Different computers that I've played this game on seem to flicker more or less. So the recording computer that I'm on, it doesn't flicker nearly as much. The computer in the living room that I play on while I'm doing my research on games so that I can hang out with the family or whatever while I'm actively doing work as well, uh, that computer, this flickers like really, really fast, and it's like hard to see what's going on. Uh, but anyways, we've got to build a road down down here. So let's go ahead and connect a road real fast. And we'll have this line up with our previous infrastructure. There it is. We've got our road. Now we need to supply water to these people. So we're going to go to the services menu and we need a water recycler. For some weird reason, the water recycler in case you were wondering uh, pipes can't cross roads in this game, which is odd. It strikes me as being an odd decision, but you know what? I'm not going to complain about it too much. Uh, we're going to push this over to here, and we've got our pipes run now. And then we're going to have these pipes go all the way up to there. And then we're going to have this pipe right here go all the way up to here so that we're providing water to pretty much everybody that needs it so that we can get these areas upgraded and make them a little bit nicer. All right, so everything is supplied with water now. We can turn on that AR over. We can turn off the AR overlay. Our water has been taken care of. We should be able to go back up to the top layer. And on looking at this next layer, yeah, our factories have all grown. So there they are. There's all of our factories that are poor people that live in this shantytown hellscape work inside of apparently they're not paying very well because these guys can't even afford drywall right now they're just using scrap corrugated metal in order to get by but it's looking pretty good so for right now let's go ahead and drop everything off of our cursor and let's take a look and see what these are going to need to upgrade so this poor residential zoning can't upgrade uh, because it needs to be inside the range of a public a publicly subsidized robot arm replacement Okay, I, I think I can probably do something like that. That doesn't seem altogether that difficult. Uh, let's take a look at our services real fast. We've got androids over here. Where's my Where's my arm mods at? So I can put in an arm modifier like right there. And it looks like it's going to have a pretty good range. So I probably want to bulldoze, bulldoze this guy's house. Sorry, sucks to be you, dude. You don't live there anymore. 
I'm sorry. You don't live here anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't live here anymore. I just, I can't do anything with it. And then we're going to put in our public arm augmentation building right there. And what you should see is this entire area should kind of like spring into action and get a little bit nicer as a result of that. We'll replace that right there so that everything looks good. Oh, look, a thing happened in the middle. What is that? The Cal Collective. It's a squatted building. Oh. Unhappy about poor conditions, some poor residents of Baller Town have taken over a poor residential and squatting in it. Early reports obtained by the Globe describe a lawless area where dissident citizens and criminals meet and apparently talk, among other things. What will happen now? Well, it'll unbottle part of the unrest, which is good. At the same time, it's going to generate more dissent and common crime in the surroundings. Alright, I mean, that's definitely... Something that was not unexpected. Oh, look, my buildings are growing, dude. They've gone from being shanty towns into being terrifying... They've, they've turned into terrifying tenements that no one should live inside of. What more could you ask for in a, in a growing society? Ah, Soviet-era dystopian tenement buildings with broke... Look, they've even got broken rebar, and they've got, like, crusty concrete on top right there. All right, well, crime is on the rise, apparently, in Ballertown. So we're going to have to do something about that. I started carrying my 38, said one citizen. You got to do what you got to do, man. I'm not out here to make the beautiful city business. I'm out here to build myself just a hellscape, man. It's going to be gnarly out here. Uh, lots of the buildings are upgrading right now, which is a really, really good start. They've got terrifying billboards. Uh, let's take a look at our overlays real fast. And as far as unrest goes, there's a lot of unrest going on, like over in this area. And it looks like street crime is also taking place in that area. We don't have any bounty hunters yet, which is really unfortunate. But for street crime and unrest, we got to do something about it. So, let's close that on down. And we've got a menu right here that's going to... Oh, yeah, it stays on. There we go. Perfect. We've got a menu right here that's going to help us out with this. So, with unrest, we can do a truth media center, which is not really going to help altogether that much. Uh, we've also got propaganda screens that'll help out a little bit. We could probably plop a couple of these in just to make sure that it doesn't... Yeah, let's put one right there before anything else goes wrong. And then maybe I'll think about... Oh, that's upgrading right there. Okay, well, let's go ahead and let's bulldoze that guy right there. And we will put a truth media center right there. Perfect. Ooh, that's a big building. That's a big building that's got the LEDs and stuff on it. Nice. Okay, well, hopefully that will brainwash people into loving us more. Uh, we can do a surveillance drone station. We can also put up CT. We can put up CCTV camera nests as well if we want to. It doesn't look like those cover much ground, but we'll throw those in there too, just to kind of keep crime down. It looks like the place is growing, and it looks like our budget is okay. Like we're gaining money right now, which by all intents and purposes seems like a good thing to me. Maybe I'll expand out and build like another area. Yeah, you know, let's build some more. Let's build some more like housey districts. Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, dude, let's build some more, like, stuff. Like, maybe, I don't know the full duration of what that arm augmentation covers. Or the full distance, but we'll go, like, right there. And we'll plop in another one. And then I'll build some support roads over here, too. There we go, take that up and around. Okay, looks all right to me. Uh, we're going to have to mess with the water grid, though. So the water grid's going to need to be fiddly diddly a little bit. Fiddly diddly diddly diddly. All right, so with the water grid... Yeah, dude, that looks like it gets us there. Like, I think we're more or less covered out here. That's not covering all of that, though. So we'll just kind of make this a disgusting spaghetti pipe over here. There we go. Spaghetti pipe away! Spaghetti pipe, take the water to all of the people that drink the water. All right, so spaghetti pipe has been unfolded. Spaghetti pipe is ready to do his duty in the service of the Splattercat Commonwealth. Uh, they've built some shanties out here. It's a good start. That's a good start. I need to take a look at my unrest and figure out where that's at. So my unrest is, like, not as terrible as it used to be. I mean, it could be worse. Let's maybe consider bulldozing, like, that building right there, and, like, that building right there, 
and then we'll go in and we'll do like a like a unrest thing over here. So we've got truth media centers. Those are too big though. We can do a giant screen of truth. That would be pretty cool, but I'm just going to put up propaganda billboards for right now. Yeah, that seems like the play for the moment. Just to like help out a little bit so this doesn't get too far out of hand. I would say maybe put in like a propaganda billboard like right there too. Just so it's like right in the middle before all this grows. Yeah, that seems okay to me. Our city's growing, so that's good. You can take a look at it. You can also do different backlightings. The day and the night cycle haven't been like put in yet. So like you can take a look at it like in the daytime, in the street view, and then there's also like the bare basic like Sim City view right here. But hopefully the day night cycle is gonna be implemented at some point. Alright, so we've got Rogue Androids, a bounty hunter's crib. I need more factories though before I can have bounty hunters. Hmm. I do like the idea of bounty hunters. That does sound pretty rad. All right, well, let's build some more factories then. I think we also, we have like a population menu around here that'll tell us like what we need. Damn, dude, there's a lot of dissidents over here. I'm gonna have to do something about that. It looks like we can get a listening post on this side. That should take care of it. There we go. That's definitely not discreet. That's like obviously a government operation. We can also put in wiretap fronts and I suppose that probably would have worked too, but like, eh, such is life. We come up with the solutions we come up with. Uh, dissidents have been fiddled with. As far as crime goes, how bad is street crime? Street crime is not that terrible considering the sprawl that we've just kind of shat out upon the environment over here. I mean, it could be a lot worse. Uh, let's go with factories. Yeah, I think we can go with some factories. That sounds pretty cool. Is there a road right there? I can't tell if there's a road right there. Can I, like, hide the tall buildings so that I can see good? There we go, I can. I'm glad to see that's, like, a part of the game and that's already been implemented. Because that's one of those things, like, if you're building a game with a lot of, sky like, skyscrapers and stuff, dude, they tend to, like, get in the way. Uh, we'll put you right there. We'll put you right there. Let's go ahead and road it on up, to Give them a few more factories to work inside of so that we can charge more awesome taxes. Did I already run the water network over here? I can't decide if I ran the water over here or not. We'll close that down real fast. And then let's take a look at our services and see if we can get like a little bit more of the drinky drinky. Oh, the drinky drinkies are already in there. Huzzah! Yay! I've already done the right thing. I am the bestest at thing doing. Alright, so taking a look at our buildings over here. They are at level one. They need to have a small android distribution center before they can go up to level two. So let's take a look at our Android distribution centers. Yeah, we can do like an Android distribution center, like right there. And like right there. And oh, they're upgrading. What are they going to look like now? I like how no construction is actually done by human beings. We just have terrifying Matrix style squiddy Android bots that look super threatening that upgrade all of our buildings. Oh, those buildings look way more awesome now. I am much happier with this situation. Okay, well, let's untoggle that real fast. These guys have low water. Aw, oh, weak, dude. Androids escape. A group of androids escape from factories and are roaming in your city. Oh, no. They are malfunctioning rogue androids now. That fast? Okay, apparently we're running low on water. I need some more water pumps around here. It's okay. It's not that hard to fix. Uh, we'll get another water recycler, like, right there, just to kind of help out. You know what? Just put one at every single corner. There you go. We're going to have to pay upkeep on it, but frankly, we're making a lot of money right now, so I'm not that worried about it. All right, back up to the next level. The water issues should be resolved, I would hope anyways. Yeah, this is all upgraded, so we're looking good. Uh, what do they want in order to be more awesome in my residential areas? So they can't advance until we give them public eye modifications. I'm not going to lie, this is kind of a weird society that we're living inside of right now. Like, listen, dude, if I can't bolt on Cyber Eyes, I'm just not going to upgrade this building, okay? It looks to me as though I can kind of upgrade these over here. Yeah, it's just kind of like upgrade around the edges, I suppose. We'll see if they start upgrading or not. Like, I could bulldoze some buildings and get one, like, right into the middle over here. That would be super cool. 
Like, let's say that I bulldoze this tenement right here. And then I just put in an iMod station right there. Like, I assume that that's going to be pretty effective. Oh, oh, dude, they got super bigger. Nice, man. Okay. It seems kind of cramped around here. Like, I'm not super sure that I would want to live in this city. It, it seems a little cramped. Like, you're never going to see the sunlight again. But you know what? What's not to love? Okay, so we need bounty hunters now, I think, right? So for rogue androids, we need bounty hunters. But, like, I should probably take a look and figure out where the rogue androids are at to begin with. All right. Um, let's... How big is this? Not that big, actually. Uh, I could sort of knock out a building, like, over here and maybe get it in. Yeah. Let's do that. So we gotta hunt these androids that are, like, roaming and eating human flesh and stuff. I'll get rid of that right there, and then we'll put in a rogue android bounty hunter right there. That'll be pretty cool. And then we'll go down here and do another one right there, and then we'll put in, like, another rogue bounty hunter right there. There we go. That should fix the problem, I hope, anyways. Uh, apparently, organized crime is now in town. So they're doing it on the hush-hush. And apparently it's operating over on this side, so that's going to be a problem that I think we're going to have to resolve before too long. But that's a problem for another time. Why can't these factories... Oh, they've got to have a medium Android distribution center. So is there anything stopping me from just putting in the upgraded ones to begin with? Oh, I don't have them yet. I need 600 factories. Okay, alright, fair enough, fair enough. The silver lining here is that I found the menu I was looking for that tells us our demand and what we need. Um, the opposite of that, the turd lining in all this, is that we need way more factories. Uh, because 60% of the people that live here are unemployed. So, let's resolve that particular crisis, shall we? Um, I can't see good. I need these buildings to, like, sit down, a be humble... A sit down, a be humble, a sit down. So that looks good. We're going to have to deal with the water situation in just a minute. We'll take that over to there. I like the soundtrack. It's very brooding and terrifying. It sounds good. Uh, now I just got to get the water run out to here. But let me finish all my industrial building first. Like, maybe we do something like this down to here. We're going to have to set up a separate water grid for these, though, which kind of sucks, and I don't want to do that. But such is life. Sometimes we do sucky things that we don't want to do. Sometimes the sucky must occur. All right, so they're Android distributing right now. Let's see if this helps out with our overall unemployment situation. Uh, I need to go back to my services, and we need to run some agua out this way. So I'll take the Agua right there. Run that over to there. And as you can see, the pipes can't cross roads, so... Our other option is to make kind of a secondary grid underneath this with just like that guy right there. And then we just put in the pipe like so. Seems like the, the winning solution to me. It seems like the way to get it done. And so, you know, I'm always going to take the path of re least resistance. I am the most legit of gamers in that regard. All right, so water hath been supplied. So these should start growing before too long. At least I would hope so. Uh, we'll fiddle with all the other problems that come along as we get there, but... Oh, no. Oh, they already built. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, so, are people happy now? Oh, we got unemployment down to 17%. Nice! Okay, so let's capitalize on this second chunk of grid over here. Apparently, there's a demand for corporate and rich residential as well. Okay. All right. We've got 7% unemployment right now. I sort of guess... We don't have the medium robot distribution just yet. But actually, the game comes together in, like, a really satisfying sort of way. Like, the buildings look good. Like, I like the models. They look considerably less good in this mode. In this mode, they basically look like primitives. But, like, in night mode, dude? Nice. 
Nice. And then like in day mode, they look pretty good too. Not too bad. So aside from the visual bugs and things that I've been seeing, oh, we got the waste silo. So aside from the visual bugs and whatnot, like, you know, the game is in very, very early access, and I think that's going to be the greatest detractor towards, like, a purchase as of right now. There are a lot of features missing from the game at the moment, and so it's really only if you're super stoked about sort of a buggy, uh, limited experience for right now that's being developed by one guy that I would recommend that you jump on in. I, I do think that the idea of the game has merit, and I do like the way that the game looks for right now, just at the beginning. Like, it seems like they've got a pretty cool design strategy going with sort of SimCity-style stamping mixed with, like, Anno-style upgrading areas based on the services that are available at the time. However, I do think that you're going to run out of content pretty quickly along the way. Uh, and so, like, there's things to unlock. Like, there's definitely eight or nine buildings that we haven't seen so far. But, you know, this is one of those titles that I'm sort of watching out of the corner of my eye to see how it goes. With one-man projects, they tend to either turn out, like, absolutely fantastic or they tend to turn out kind of terrible. Um, there are visual bugs in here, like, with the overlays and stuff that I was showing with, like, the flickering and whatnot. That may definitely get on your nerves. But I do think that the idea of a cyberpunk dystopian city builder has merit, and it could definitely turn out to be pretty cool. So I figured I'd show it off here today while at the same time sort of voicing some of my reservations. I very much like the fact that you're not actively trying to build a successful city you are creating like an area where bounty hunters roam and where there's roving gunfights in the middle of the streets and stuff like that like you're trying to effectively facilitate the adventures that you would see in your average shadow run campaign by creating a city that has all of the set dressing that could make that happen and that's kind of a, a cool idea in all honesty however with regards to the menus everything you need is here to try to like you know tell you what you need to build more of based on your demands and whatnot like I've yet to not be able to find a piece of information that I need nested inside some menu somewhere. Uh, the menus are limited, which is nice. You know, there's not menus inside of menus inside of menus inside of menus, which I appreciate. Uh, but for right now, all our city really needs is we need, like, a few more bounty hunters, I think? I think that, what did our residents need in order to go up to level 3? They need the public eye modification. Can they go up to level 4? Ah, they need brain modifications to go up to level 4, so that's pretty cool as well. So anyways, kind of an interesting premise for a game. My name is Splattercat. I sit through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today, we were looking at Skid Cities. Tomorrow, we'll be looking at something else. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like to help me on out. Give me a comment to let me know what you think about it, and I will see you all tomorrow with something else that I have found on the never-ending list of Steam games releasing on any given week. How you doing? Take care, everybody. That's all I got for you.